I remember when I was in your age, I hardly have even half of what you doing now or speaking now. So thank you. You're also a great inspiration. Is it ready? Great. Okay. Let me first introduce our um, honorable guests and panelists. That actually, I I ask them to do some homework before they come. Um, let me introduce uh, first Angeli Kosa. Um, she's the CEO of Cuba Chambers School Board, also a candidate for running Saratoga City Council. Am I right? Yeah. And the next one is Emily Low. No, no, no. A Hong Wei. I'm sorry. Uh, it's Fremont Union uh, High School District. And, and also a candidate for Cupertino City Council. Wow. So now we have, we have both double title, double head. And what I asked them to do is, you see the title from receiver to giver, and also from inspiration to action. And so I give them each five minutes to share their journey, how they get from ins being inspired to now they can come here to inspire you. So um, who you want to go first? Uh, maybe Anjali, would you like to? Please. Sure, let's see if we can do the five minutes. So hello everybody. I have to say I am so inspired by hearing the wonderful speeches that were given by the students. You all are so ahead of times than I was at your age, just like Anthony said. You know, we didn't have all these opportunities that you all have. Um, I have a background where I came to, I'm an immigrant, came to this country 30 years ago to go to college in Kansas. And that's where I first encountered civic engagement. I learned that to be able to do something, to understand how, uh, the system works, you need to be uh, part of the system, just was mentioned by some of the other speakers earlier. And so I got involved on the campus and was part of student government, which gave me a perspective of how things are done. So I would inspire all you youngsters to go ahead and make sure, I know some of you are already involved on your high school campuses, but continue that involvement as you get to college and learn dis different aspects of civic leadership. And civic leadership just doesn't mean to be able to get into a government or into a political position. It means to be involved in your community, to understand where you live and how you live with friendly neighbors, how you be a team player. It's really important to be a team player in no matter which city, which country, which state you live in. So that was my beginning, that moved me to California. It was 25 years ago. And this is where I started my family and got even more deeply involved into the cities that I live in and grew along with my kids. Having three children going to the public schools here, I was inspired to be part of their every day volunteering on the school campuses, leading to being on the school board in Cupertino and have been serving there for the last 10 years. It just makes it that we have to be part of where we live by giving back either as a parent in the classroom or as a community member at the in the larger community. And this also led me to be part of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce where I have learned a lot about businesses and how do we advocate. Advocacy is also part of civic leadership. There is, as you will learn as you go through, there's lots and lots of ways to be involved in civic leadership. And to continue my journey with that, I decided that now I would be running for Saratoga City Council, where I've been living for the last 15 years, and be able to serve there to further be part of the community and be part of a solution. I think one of the key things you all have to remember is you should always be part of a solution. And the way to do that is to be a team player, to hear and listen to everybody's voices and be able to come up and make work happen together. So hopefully we answered your question. Great, thank you. Thank you so much.
Now it's Hong Wei. Okay, um, I'm going to share my personal growing up experience. Um, I'm a first generation um, immigrant from Taiwan, and I came here to study at UCLA, got my master's, like any other people. We just moved to Silicon Valley because my husband studied computer science, where I would uh, end up with. And I have kids, I went, they went to school, I had no idea about civil, civil leadership. And one day, somebody called me and said, you got to come to school. I said, what? Isn't that school is run by the government? Why do I need to come and volunteer? So I was told by Barry Chan that if you don't come to volunteer, your kids will not have art classes, will not have music classes. I said, what? So we came and we joined PTA. We realized that the American society is everybody participates. So it's a really a learning, growing experience for me. So I always said everyone can be a civic leader because I learned on this journey from PTA volunteers doing international. We don't like taco night. It was taco night to start with the Lincoln. You know, a lot of Asian Americans not used to taco. So we sneak into a little bit of fried rice and fried noodles on the first year and everybody loved it. So next year we did an international night. So from from international night, I went to become PTA co-president and I school site council and I learned that participation is the democratic way in the United States of America. And I've learned how to be a participant in the society. But everybody can be a civil leader if you have a learning, a mentality to learn. So this is a growing process. When I was appointed on the high school board, I knew Nothing, really. Basically, I knew nothing about governing, but it is a learning process. So what I'm telling the youngster is learn, watch and learn. But as Anjali says, teamwork is very, very important. Have a compassion to listen to people, but also do your due diligence and doing research. Find facts. And I always tell people, elected officials are representatives of you. You are the pay taxpayers. Every organization in the United States that uses taxpayers' money are elected by taxpayers to make sure the money is spent where your money should go. So as school district is a public agency, we use public taxpayers' money. So our job is to make sure the money goes to educating students. So I, this learning process, I always tell people, everyone can be a civil leadership as long as you have this learning mentality and you really want to contribute to your society you know where you are your family is the most important unit in but after your family i told parents i think some parents here they know what i say when your kids graduate from high school you never graduate from high school you send your kids to college but you help other kids, you educate other kids because we are one in one society. So when you go off to college, you tell your parents, they never graduated from high school. They still live in the community, they're part of the community, and they should be a real part of the civil leadership. Great, thank you. So now, uh, let's, let's hold our pause until, can you use one or two minutes to say, what you're going to do in terms of civic engagement. After you share the story, how you get inspired, and now you're inspiring them. So now it's like, what will be the, the changes you want to see and you want to make? So maybe I'll take this first. Okay, so I always say, leadership is a servant. We are truly leadership in servants. So servant leadership is what a mentality needs to be. We're here to serve the constituents. So what do we do? We listen carefully and we do do research and we make decisions for the best knowledge that we can have. And there is a Chinese saying that I remember very vividly. On the outside, we need to be round. That means we're listening, we're compassionate, but on the inside, we need to be square. That means we have principles, we have moral standards. Those things never change. But what we do as a civil leader is we need to be courageous leaders. We lead people to believe in the goodness of the society. We will also need to be compassionate leaders. That means we listen to everyone 
and we make sure that what we decide is for the best of beneficial to all. I know it sounds a high goal, but we need to sometimes we need to disagree, agree to disagree. But when you have that compassionate, when you are round outside, you can lead people to believe what you want them to go. So I always encourage young people to be courageous leaders and smart leaders and compassionate leaders. But some things never change. Some principles never change. Some moral standards never change. So not everything is about winning. Winning is important, but to win your people's heart, that's more important than anything else. So my advice um, as CIVA leadership is be a servant to people and really uh, have your principle, but listen to people and lead people to, believe, to what you believe in. Make changes together. Thank you. Thank you, Hong. Uh, to follow on with the theme, Hong has said it so well, to be a good leader, you have to lead by example, and you also have to lead by being transparent and being listened to everybody. But as she mentioned, we all have to have certain moral standards, and you have to go by that when you're making your decisions finally. So you need to make sure that you're listening to everybody that you're leading, because as elected officials, we were elected by democracy by a group of people that believed that we could represent them properly and present their views. And in order to be able to do that, we need to be sure we listen to everybody's views. They may not coincide with your views, but you're not there to answer questions according to what you think. It is more about the people that you're leading, the people that put you there and elected you to be their representative. So as a school board member, I've always made decisions based on, I am here because I have to make sure that my decision affects all the children that we serve in the district. It is not only about a small segment of children, it's about all the children. And we have to make the best decisions based on that. It is very, very important for uh, good leaders to be good listeners. The first thing we have to do is be a listener, to be actively listening. And I'm sure a number of you would have heard that in some of your classes, to be an active listener um, in order to be able to make good decisions. So what I would like you all to remember is to become an active listener and then to lead by good morals and standards. Thank you. Thank you, Angelie. Now we have our last guest, Emily Lowe. And Emily is the, let me see, it's aging huh? my eyes. I can introduce myself. It's the former mayor of Saratoga and also the city council member of? Saratoga. Saratoga. Yes. Perfect. See, I don't need to time them. They just come on and at the exact time. Here we go. Um, first of all, I need to apologize because I think I have some mix up in my schedule. So um, I'm running a little late. Um, I am Emily Lowe. I am currently the city council member of Saratoga and also a mayor in 2014 and 17. So are we doing a bio right now? Oh, in, in the introduction? They already answered the free question. So, all yours. Five minutes. The question okay. is, how they being inspired? Okay. Um, so, when my kids was at school, like a lot of parents, I was very involved with the school. Um, so I run Chinese schools, as you probably know, those uh, who operate like once a week, and um, those you might find it a struggle to attend. So I am um, one of the principal of uh, Chinese schools, and then I was the PTA co-president, just like a lot of parents who are very involved with schools. So as I, and, and as you know, as a PTA president, you already deal with a lot of issues, um, school-related, academically-related, um, 
parents might have different ways of raising their kids and different expectations. But anyway, so that was at school. So after my kids graduate, I graduate myself from the school community. And since I run a home-based business, I was pretty involved with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I have been their president and um, kind of helped the Chamber of Commerce going through some very difficult times. So. I guess that's how the community sees it, and they kind of encourage me to step up and run for city council, and that's how I got involved. I ran for the first time in 2008. I didn't got elected, and then I tried again in 2010, and I was elected on the city council, and so this is my eighth year. Great, thank you. Wow, you, you're, you're in a perfect timing. You actually. Uh, we'll give you a few more minutes later to answer question. So now you hear a little common thread. What are all these civic leaders have in common? They all said, you need to serve before you lead. You need to listen. And also you lead by example. And they share some of their journey. I'm sure you can grab them after the meeting to hear more. But now I want to give the time to the, uh, also the student panel that they, they actually have a couple questions want to ask uh, about the panel. So let me pass the mic. Who want to go first? Who want to go first? Okay, perfect. And you can address to any one of the panels and also you can address to general so they can choose to and so, go. Um, so as we all know, leadership are very important. So is there only like one form of leadership or do they come in all types of styles? And like, if they do, which one is like relatively the most effective? Wow, this is a million dollar question. <laughs> Who want to take it first? Okay. Thank you very much for the question. I think it's a great question because, well, there are some qualities in leadership which I think, whether it's in a private sector or in public sector, it holds true. Something like passion, um, integrity, and the ability to, um, to motivate something, for example, however, in the form of leadership, I think there are many different leadership styles. Um, um, if, if I would want to kind of differentiate, I think it's more like a leadership style. Some are quiet, but get things done, and they're able to work uh, with the different constituents, but they might not be like a big talker, and they might not grandstand. They might not, no, they might not want to grandstand at all, but they get things done. Whereas others like to talk, um, you know, they're, they're just different styles as far as leadership goes, but I think the basic quality to me um, are still the same. Thank you. That answered my question perfectly. Can I? I'm, I'm going to add a little bit to it. In, in true leadership is someone not just listen and not just do by example, but you raise each one up. Leadership about raising everyone up, not to put someone down to make you look good, but to make everybody look good. And I think that's a true leadership. Someone would follow you because they know you value them. So to be a true leader, you really need to look at everyone around you and find their value, and then really use that to raise everyone up. Um, for and Angelina, um, I'm think, and you mentioned team cooperation and um, the active listener is very important as being a leader. So I'm wondering, uh, what would you do after receiving different opinions from of a huge group of people? So thank you for that question. That's great. How do you handle it after you listen to so many different opinions? That's the million dollar question again. But as what you do is you go back to how 
Hong had talked about that Chinese proverb, which is you know, round outside and square inside, where you are, have those moral standards, you have those um, ideas as to what you believe to be right. So you take from everybody what you heard, and you see where is it that you can find the common ground and bring everybody together. Just like Hong said, we have to bring people up. So we sit down as a team, you discuss it. And with the positive intentions of seeing that we can find common ground, it doesn't have to mean that we all agree, but we can all agree to disagree as long as it's civil and we can understand each other's point of view. For example, on a school board or a city council, when a vote is taken, even if the vote is passed by 3-2, because usually a council or a uh, school board is five members, at the end of it, you, if it's a, it's a passing vote, you all pass it, whether you said yes or no on it. You go out there and you represent the council or the school district based on what was passed, and not to say that I did not vote for it, but it is how we all came together and decided this was best for the children of the district. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Um, so this is kind of like to help everyone who wants to become a leader. So what do you think are personal traits that a leader should possess or that they should try to grow so that they can become a really strong leader in the future? And like, is it different for like different types of leadership, like for people who do community service versus people who want to like work in the government? So. So um, let me paraphrase the question. The question is, um, there are different leadership types. Some people do service, some people do government leadership. Is, is there any difference or? Um, what type of traits you should try to have, like personality-wise? You know, um, to me, I started, I think a lot of us do the same thing. We started as service. We started joined PTA. I was on the high school's foundation board since 2004. I was a board member with the YMCA and Asian American Parent Association. I still do high school senior and party script program. That's service. And that service brings me to believe that when we serve, people really value your service. And that naturally translates to being a elected official. I, I really want to explain what is an elected official. I always say an elected official is you have to be elected to volunteer. Okay, we love to volunteer, but in order to be an elected official, you have to be elected to volunteer. Why do people elect you? Because they know you can serve them. They know that you can represent them. However, well, I always tell people, you. You vote for me because you trust my judgment. If you want me to listen to you every turn, then vote for yourself. Do you vote for me because you trust my judgment that I will listen to you, I will serve you, but I will make the best judgment at the time I know how to make it after I listen to everybody and after I do my due research of facts, logical, scientific decisions. So that's, that trust is very important. So the difference between just a volunteer, I'm also a Cupertino Rotary, so I'm volunteer there broadly. Uh, we always kind of joke said, you know, if I don't do it right, what can they do, fire me? Well, as an elected official, I guess I can be fired. So the difference between just volunteer and being an elected volunteer is that you have that responsibility. So another way I want to say it, when you get elected, we receive a letter. People call us honorable so-and-so. I feel very uncomfortable on that honorable. But after a couple of years, I realized, wow, I would accept it as because when they say honorable Angelique Kauser, um, honorable Emily Lee, they're not describing you and I. They are demanding us to think honorably, to do honorable things, to make honorable decisions. It is a demand. It is an obligation. It is a description of our actions, our deeds, and what we say. It's not a description of us. So after I realized that, I feel very comfortable because every time I see that honorable hungry on the envelope, it reminds me to do honorable things, to think honorably, to be honorable to the constituents who voted me into office. So that's the difference between a volunteer and being elected to volunteer. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, time is running out. So I, I have to say thank you for all three honorable guests, honorable panelists, and honorable audience ask those a question. I'm sorry you didn't get a chance to ask it, but they took all the time. And because we have another a panel, uh, going to be very good. So let's give another big applause for them to share their journey. And I thank you so much. <laughs>